Thanks, Mark. And what I'm going to do uh, briefly here is talk about the numbers of those we evacuated uh, during Operation uh, Allies Refuge from Afghanistan. The evacuees, who were they? How many came into the United States? Uh, these Afghans, in, in what category, what kind of type of visa they entered the United States? And then look at future flows and what next? So to start with, I, we know that around 124,000 were on those planes who were evacuated from Afghanistan. Mostly, over 80% were Afghans. And uh, these Afghans, we don't know exactly who, which category they belong to. Um, in reality, what happened with the chaos and, and the urgency, what the U.S. Uh, government wanted to do was get on those planes as many people as it could. And now they are only going through these categories to figure out exactly who is who. But we know a few things. We know, for example, that these Afghans are not what we call Afghan allies or heroes for the most part meaning those who held the U.S. forces in Afghanistan at the risk of their lives. They are not those uh, categories. They are what the U.S. officials are calling today uh, Afghans at risk in general, and that applies to any Afghan uh, that is perhaps not a Taliban today. We also know that some potential terrorists were on those planes, so the U.S. evacuated some potential terrorists, Afghan terrorists, some made it to the United States, some did not, are still in, in U.S. sites abroad. I believe Dan will, will uh, talk about the security issues, so I will leave it to him. So who made it to the United States? And the numbers are changing continually, but the latest numbers that I have, almost 60,000 are made it here. Of those, over 80% are Afghans. 11% American citizens, 6% uh, green card holders. Uh, we know that most of the Afghans admitted here were paroled in, which brings me to the categories of, of uh, visas or uh, admissions we have for Afghans that we are bringing, Afghan evacuees. So parole is for those, it's a permission to enter the United States and stay in the United States temporarily, usually it's for one year, because of humanitarian reasons or public benefits. Uh, it's the the uh, DHS secretary has the authority to designate uh, a population for parole, and he has done that for Afghans recently, and he gave them two years of parole. Now, parolees, don't have access to green card, etc., legal uh, status, but they can adjust, the, adjust their status in the United States, whether through asylum or the SIV, uh, or family member who is here who could be, uh, you know, green card holder, American citizen. Which brings us to the SIV. I'm sure many of you have heard the word SIVs are coming or, or we are accepting SIVs. What's SIV? That's a special immigrant program, visa program, that was created for also Iraqis before and, and, and Afghans uh, to bring people who are at risk in, their, in Afghanistan who had the U.S. government. So there are two, two SIV programs. One is the SIV for translators, interpreters. This one is capped at 50 per fiscal year, and it's ongoing. The other one is temporary. It, is, it has a limited number. It has limited spots, meaning when these availability, these spots are filled, the program ends on its own, unless Congress adds more spots to it. Now, this second SIV, which is for uh, Afghans who worked for on behalf of the U.S. government in Afghanistan, uh, has still some 19,000 available spots. Now, when I say 19,000, that is for principal applicants. Uh, those who are accepted as SIV can bring their family members, and the number will add up uh, easily to 100,000. The last category will be refugees, refugees through the Refugee Resettlement Program. Uh, recently, uh, President Biden in August uh, uh, designated Afghans as having access to the P2 
category in the refugee resettlement program. Briefly, it gives direct access to this program, expedited processes uh, for Afghans who do not uh, are not eligible for SIVs. Uh, what about the benefits of all these categories? Parolees have no benefits. They are uh, the benefits are very limited. Uh, they they have, I think, for, for some 90 days, some kind of help. However, SIVs have access to refugee resettlement program benefits. And as soon as they land, the first day they are in the United States, they are giving, they're given free green cards. Obviously, refugees have access to all the benefits of refugee resettlement program and federal benefits and also have to apply for a green card one year after arrival. So what next? We have still in, in US sites abroad some 50,000 uh, Af uh, evacuees, mostly most of them are Afghans. So uh, Canada agreed to resettle 5,000 of those. May, the, the United States is kind of talking to other countries so that they accept to resettle others. But my guess is most of those will come to the United States. Now, we have to expect also that we, we're going to have more SIV applicants. Why? Because uh, not everybody who worked with the U.S. forces in Afghanistan at that time, beforehand, before the evacuation, wanted to leave Afghanistan. Well, now with the Taliban rule, that changes uh, everything, and, and, and we are going to expect uh, more uh, SIV applicants. However, that said, the program is limited in numbers. Again, we cannot extend it unless Congress adds to it. Uh, the refugees, the UN, UNHCR uh, is predicting another half a million Afghans wanting to leave their country and ask for refugee status. That will top to the 2.2 something billion refugees, Afghan refugees already in Iran and Pakistan. Now, what do we do with these half a million? Are we going to accept them all? That, I, I want to note also that the refugee resettlement program is also limited in capacity. Uh, the, the refugee admissions follow a ceiling that is pre set by the President of the United States. This fiscal year, the ceiling was set to 62,500. Now, even if Biden said he'll increase it to 125,000 or even 200,000 next year, it's still limited in capacity. And are, are we going to prioritize uh, Afghans over other nationalities and only bring Afghans. I mean, that we haven't done that in the past, Afghan admissions as refugees through during uh, the last decade. Uh, through the refugee resettlement program, only total, I think, 11,000 or something. So the last important point here is that we are left with kind of parolees who are not limited in number. However, parolees do not have access to benefits which just cite as SIVs and refugees. So that's an interesting move from the uh, White House who recently uh, asked Congress to, pa to pass a so short-term what we call uh, CR, continuing resolution, that will allow Afghans paroled into the United States, not just now, not just during this evacu evacuation period, but since July of this year till September 2022. So it, it will encompass the whole fiscal 2022 year. Anybody who, any Afghan who's paroled during that time will have access to the refugee resettlement benefits, will have a driver's license, IDs, and more importantly, they can apply for a green card one year after arrival. Now, their family members can join at any time and as parolees 
and have access to all these benefits too. So that's an important step here. Uh, it seems that the parole, if if this this uh, move, uh, Congress accepts this, uh, this means that parole is now perhaps uh, the open door for Afghan uh, uh, Afghans who want to leave their country because refugees and SIVs are the two programs are limited, and I will end at that.